G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and you've reached part 10 of my uh, Python quick tip series. So in this one, we're actually looking at putting everything we've learned together into an example. So we've learned a lot of separate techniques in isolation, but now we need to put them together in context just to prove how you can use Python to solve an actual hypothetical situation. So the goal is gonna look a little bit like this. It looks like a big script, but we're gonna work through it one step at a time so that you can sort of contextualize how we change scripts to suit certain scenarios. So the hypothetical scenario that we're gonna begin with is imagine that we're rolling 10 dice that have six sides and we're adding the results together. So we're gonna build just a one-off test initially to do this. So I'm just gonna use Thony, which is the IDE that I've been using for this series. I recommend that you use something like this or similar. So what I'm gonna do in Thony, so this is, my, this is my writing space, this is where I make my script. This is where my outcome comes out or the shell and this is the warnings or the, the troubleshooter. So what I'm gonna do first is just, I'm gonna install one package. So luckily Thony comes with a, 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 an installer that finds packages for you, um, which is great. So we're gonna install NumPy. So make sure that you install NumPy or NumPy. Um, in this case, I've already installed it and we're just using it for one function. So we're gonna import NumPy under the alias NP. Now we're gonna get a function from here um, let's say I don't know what function I'm looking for. Remember that we can use a special function. So we can print dir and encapsulate just to find out all the attributes available. And I know that I'm looking for a seed or something like that to generate how random we're doing this. And I can see there's, there's one, there's seed. And I can also see rand int because I want to make random integers. So let's interrogate the rand int function first because I don't know the syntax that I'm going to need to use just yet. So we'll get dot, double underscore, doc, double underscore. And now I can see that we're looking for something in the form of a low value and a size. So in this case, I'm really just looking for um, a low and a high value for my role. So that's perfect. So what we'll do is just go back to NP random, generate a seed. In this case, I'll just do one, and then we'll just generate a random integer. Random, and we'll go between one and seven because I know that it doesn't include the last number that you include in the range. So this will be between one and six. But we need to add all these values up over 10 rolls. So we're gonna use a for loop to do this essentially. So we've got random numbers, but now we're generating our for loop. And then we need to sum them together at the end as well. So in this case, we're gonna set a few variables. We're gonna go number of rolls equals 10 and the value of the rolls is an empty list because we haven't done our rolling yet. From here, we need to generate a range. So we're gonna do range rolls, and we're gonna generate a range between zero and the number of rolls. And by default, it does a spacing of one. So this lets us run an iteration uh, 10 times over a study. And we're gonna go four, and we're gonna define a local variable called rolls, or called roll, and we're gonna do it in the range of range rolls colon and then automatically Thony does an inset for you which is great we're going to define a local variable just what is the result and this is where we're going to move our random integer function because we're going to do this multiple times and then we're going to append the result to the value roles list so value roles we're going to use the append method i'm going to append that local result variable let's just try printing the value roles list and see what we're looking at Great, so you can see we've got six, four, five, one, two, four, six, one, one, two. Excellent, so we can see we've got 10 values there between one and six, and they're random. On top of that, we're also just gonna do a sum. So we're just gonna say total equals the sum of the value of rolls. And we can also print our total, just to see what that all adds up to. And we can see it adds up to 32. So great, we've done our first step. We know what sum we're rolling. We can obviously change our seed to get different results as well. See lots of different outcomes. And we'll just go back to one. Okay, so we can change this as well into a while loop. And we're gonna do this just to make our script more convenient and more flexible because usually when you're rolling a dice and you're doing dice game, there's little tricks that come in where under certain conditions, there'll be a different thing to do. You might roll a certain number and take it away instead, for example. We're gonna look at that really shortly, but first we're just gonna come and change this to a while loop before our friend gets a bit sneaky on us and comes and changes the rules on us. So we're gonna be one step ahead. Okay, so we're gonna do a while loop instead. So let's just replace this four line 
we actually need one extra variable first as well. So initially, the number of rolls we've taken is going to be zero. In this case, we no longer need a range as well because we're not iterating using a range. We're iterating using using a while loop, so a condition. So we're going to say while the number of rolls we've taken is less than our total number of rolls, we're going to iterate. So again, we're going to get a dice roll. We're going to get the value of the rolls appended, but then we're going to do a special thing. We're going to take the taken number of rolls and we're going to plus equals. So this is a special method I haven't covered yet where you can add a number to a variable and set the variable's value again. So we're going to set taken rolls to taken rolls plus one in this case. So we actually we need to do plus equals one. And now this will raise taken rolls by one. And as we get closer to number of rolls, we'll run out of rolls to take. And we'll leave everything exactly the same, run our script, and we get the same result. So we've implemented a while loop instead of a for loop in this case. And that's good. a good thing we did because our friend said each time we roll a one, we start rolling again and until we get 10 rolls. So every time we roll a one, we get the chance to gain more points. Um, and it's a good thing we're using Python now because that could take quite a while. It's very likely you'll roll a one when you roll between one and 10, uh, 10 times. Okay, so now we're gonna be implementing a, an if function in this case to catch when we roll a one and do something different. So in this case, I'll just put a space here so I can see my empty list line. So we're still doing the same while condition. We're still adding our result, but now we're gonna detect when we roll a one. So we're gonna do if, and we're gonna say if result is not equal to one, because we usually wanna do our more common condition in our if statement first, so that it doesn't have to go through two steps to figure it out. So in this case, we're just gonna say when it's not equal to one, we still do our taken rolls plus one. And then we're gonna go back and do an else. And in this case, taken rolls will get reset to zero. So now we can expect to see many more results and many more rolls. So we're just gonna play that. And now you can see it's much more difficult. There's a lot more rolls involved. Let's change our C just to get an idea of maybe the variance we might see now as a result. So it looks like we're around about 70 in most cases. Oh, no, we're not. So look at that, we just got 265 rolls there. That's pretty intense. So it's really hard to predict how many times we're gonna do this. So eventually we're gonna to need to figure out the likelihood of what we're gonna get out of the study. As well as that, we could also get the result of how many times we rolled the dice as well. Um, so we can essentially just count the number of items in value roll. So in this case, what am I, mm, should I do it now? Yeah, I'll do it now. So we can just say that count or well, the number of times we rolled the dice is equal to the length, so the length of the list. And in this case, we're just gonna check how many things are in value rolls. And we can just print the number of times we rolled the dice. So you can see we rolled it 19 times in this case. I'll just put that above in my total. So we can see we rolled the dice 19 times, our score was 72, and these were our results. Okay. So the last thing that our friend asks us, and this is pretty hard to do, we're gonna do it in Python in a few steps, is what is the probability or how likely am I, uh, am I to have to roll the dice? And what's my likely score based on just a lot of tests that we generate? So we're gonna to need to iterate our test now. So as we covered before, when you iterate a really big function, usually you wanna define your own function rather than write it a hundred times or embed it inside a statement. So this is gonna get a little bit tricky, so try to follow along um, and we'll see how we go. Because we're gonna turn what we've done into a function, which is quite different. So we're gonna go all the way up the top and just, we're gonna use a hashtag to do a comment. And we're just gonna say define function. So these are great to just sort of navigate your script and know what each section does. We can also say import packages. Okay, so let's start building our function. So you remember we say def and we'll just call our function roll test. And we're gonna have two variables. We're gonna have our seed, and then the number of times we're rolling the dice in our test. And we're gonna start a new line. And the first thing we're gonna do is just define our seed. But instead of defining a seed of one, now we're embedding that variable of s instead to establish our seed. We're gonna say, how many rolls are we taking? Uh, so we've taken zero rolls. And in this case, we're also gonna get the value of the rolls each time. And in this case, it's an empty list to begin with. So we're just gonna ignore number of rolls for now because we're gonna embed this instead. So we're gonna take our while condition 
and we're going to move this. So at the moment, we've got a while, so we need to embed at the moment, and we also need to embed once more. So we're saying whilst the taken of roles is less than the number of roles, which is now n instead of number of roles. And then from there, we're doing the same thing, generating a local variable, appending it to our results, and then we're checking if we need to keep going. But now we need to sort of set some variables to finish off our definition. So we're gonna say that our total is equal to the sum of the value of the roles in this case. And we're gonna return a list. So we're gonna return two things. We're gonna return total and the value of the roles in total. Remembering that the total is our sum and the value of the roles is a list which will be inside a list. And we can get rid of this number of roles. So now we've built a definition and we'll just run it once just to make sure our function works. So we'll just say run the test. In this case, we need to call on our test. We're gonna say test equals to the role test, which is our function name. We're gonna do a seed of one and 10 roles in this case. And what we'll do is just print our results from the test. So we're gonna go print results. And in this case, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we need to call on an index now. So we're gonna say that we want the item at index zero, which we know is our total. And then we also want the list of our roles. And we're calling on them by an index and square brackets. And now you can see we're getting our sum and the total number of roles. And it's still the same because we're just running it once on the same seed. But now we can apply this on an iterative basis. So we're gonna run multiple tests. Oh, actually we almost, we're almost there. <laughs> just ignore that you saw that. Um, so now we're gonna get a little bit more complicated and we're gonna iterate our function to run the test multiple times. So we've still got our role test defined and it's all still the same, but now we need to set the variables for the test rather than just run the test. So we're going to just delete this and we'll just say set test variables. And we're gonna say now, what's the number of roles that we're applying to our test, which is gonna be 10. How many times are we running our test? Let's say we're gonna run it, uh, we'll do it three times initially. And then we need to establish a range, like sort of like what we did when we first had this as a four function. Number of tests, and we're gonna, we're gonna make a range to iterate over. So it's gonna be a range from zero to the number of times we're running the test. Now we need to set a couple of empty lists. So we need to see the total number of times or the total sums that come out of our tests and the total roles that come out of our tests as well. And we're gonna make two empty lists. So I used a special syntax there. I set two variables with a comma and then I set two values with a comma. So each one gets respectively set by where it's positioned behind the comma. Okay, so now we're gonna run the tests. So not just one test, multiple tests. So we're gonna say for t for tests in the number of tests, which is a range. We're gonna say that the outcome, which is a local variable, is equal to our function of role tests. And we're gonna set our seed just to the test that we're currently sitting on. So we're gonna have a seed of zero, seed of one, seed of two, etc. And then we're gonna set it times the number of roles, which is a global variable back here. So we always have the same number of roles in each test. We're gonna say that our total is the item at index zero in the outcome. Remember that it's, it's a list with two items. We're then gonna say that, hmm, we'll say that the number of roles we took is gonna be the length of the list of the roles from the test. So we're gonna say the length of outcome at index one. So we're counting the number of roles we've taken. Now we need to append these. So we're gonna say the total sums append and we're gonna append total first. So this is the total, the, the list with all the totals combined. We're then also gonna combine the total roles using append to append them back to the list. And we're gonna append roles. So at this point we have a big list with all our roles or our count of roles and our total sum. So what we'll do now is we'll just print what we've got currently, total sums and we'll print total roles just to see what we're looking at. And of course we have an invalid syntax. So I think in this case, I've got one too many brackets there. Cool, so we can see that these are our sums and this is the number of roles we took. So look at that variance, 270, 72 and 63. So we need to take far more tests than this to really figure it out. Let's just say we take 10. 
Now you can see we're running the function 10 times, but we want to know the average and we really want to push our number of tests up. And Python can handle a lot of iteration for numbers. So what we're going to do now is get an average. So we're going to get the sum of the total number of sums that we got from our test. And we're also going to sum the total number of rolls. So let's just say initially, this is our sum, but now we need to get an average. So we're going to divide it by the length or the total number of results in each list. And we could technically just use the number of times we ran the test as well. So we could just say divide it by times rather than just make a redundant section of the function. And now we should get the average. So on average in 10 tests, we're seeing 157 as our sum and 46.6 as our result. So we've solved the problem. But now let's really push Python. So let's, let's say the test gets run 100 times. And now we can see the numbers changing quite a lot. So we still need to push that number up. Let's go 1000 times. So you can see we're varying much less now. Um, let's keep going, 10,000. So we're running 10,000 tests. And look at that, how quick is that? Um, amazing, so we've really only, between going from 1,000 to 10,000, we've only went down by 0.4 rolls and just under one on our dice rolls. So I'm pretty comfortable with this as my likelihood. So I can expect to score about 110 and roll about 31 dice in a test. So we've solved our problem. Um, so well done, we did it. Um, so now you can go and gamble with confidence. <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding, don't gamble. Um, but Python can be brilliant to solve little dice problems like that. If you ever get given one by a friend, get out Thonny and show them how it's done. Um, so that's pretty much the end of the, the 10 part series. Um, I'd like to remind everyone there is a guide on GitHub that I'm going to upload um, in the miscellaneous section, which will have sort of a really extensive version of what I've just shown you from when I was learning Python. So hopefully that helps. It's about 120 pages, so it's pretty big. Um, but I guess from here, choose your pathway with Python. Uh, you might be a data scientist, you might be an architect, you might you might be doing anything with this for all I know. You could be a fitness coach. Uh, there's so many things you can do with Python. If you are an architect or an engineer or you're in construction like me, um, you're probably here because you're going to apply it to a program called Dynamo. So I will be doing a series on Dynamo and Python after this. But if you're a data scientist, um, maybe go and check out Stack Overflow or a website like that where people collaborate um, and just learn more about Python because there's lots of different things you might need, um, like different packages and learning more about arrays, for example, and definitely learning more about data visualization using Python. Um, but hopefully you enjoy your journey from here. So thanks for watching. Um, I've had a really good time putting this together and I hope that you've learned a lot from it. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave it on this video or whichever video is most relevant to the question and I'll do my best to help you. Um, I'm not really advanced with Python, I'm just learning it too, um, but hopefully I can help you when you have a query. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing my channel, I do make about two videos a week, um, typically related to architecture and construction industry and how software can relate to it. Um, so feel free to subscribe if you're interested. Uh, but thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.